everyone. Happy Monday morning to you. And today is May 4th, so may the 4th be with you. That just never gets old. I love it. And I've been a Star Wars fan for a very long time. So see, woo, may the 4th be with you. I love it. I was actually going to wear my hair like Princess Bun Bun, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. So all right, so let's talk about a few things. So there are uh, going to be meetings uh, this week. T tomorrow is the GRF meeting. And as we've talked before, the meetings will be on each time. Uh, we have our uh, meeting on Tuesdays, so GRF will be tomorrow at 9.30, and that will follow our morning broadcast. And uh, later in our show today, we'll show you a little bit about how you can participate in that. Today on our show, we have Carlos Rojas, who is our Director of Security, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about just a variety of different things that are going on in the village, some added security, some concerns, and some other things that we, we need you to participate in. But first, let's tell you our brain teaser for the day. So we have a really, uh, it's a short one, but here you go. What five-letter word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it? So here you go. Five-letter word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it. So you think about that, and then later in our broadcast, we will tell you all about it. Let's go ahead and tell you about our regular websites that we've been telling you about the entire time here, cdc.gov, ochealthinfo.com. And then, of course, if you want to see the governor's breakdown of the reopening of our state, you can go to usa.gov forward slash coronavirus. Or you could go to our website, which is lagunawoodsvillagealerts.com, and we will have all that information for you and links to the most necessary things here locally. Or you can email us at info at lagunawoodsvillage.com. And then, of course, we have our recorded hotline, 949 268 2019 and we do update that as we get information. Now today let's take a look at our weather. The weather is going to be warm, warmer and then hot. It is really beefing up this this week. So today we're looking at 8061, very nice. Tuesday 8662, then we jump up to 87 on Wednesday, hot and then it's really going to be warm. 9360 on Thursday and then we back back down 10 degrees. 8361 for a very pleasant weekend. Let's go ahead and take a look at our sunrise. Boy, I thought I woke up way too late this morning because it was bright. 559 was our sunrise and our sunset was 737. And some of us went out last night and saw the bioluminescence. And then this adorable photo was sent to us by Diane Strobel. Look at that cute little squirrel hanging out. So she got a nice little photo of a squirrel hanging out one of the trees. Thank you, Diane. That was adorable. And uh, if you have a fun little photo that you'd like to share with us, please send it to Laguna Woods Village TV at gmail.com. All right, when we come right back, we will be speaking to Director of Security, Carlos Rojas. We'll be back in just a moment. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. As Orange County's highest ranked hospital, Hogue is the place to turn to for timely information, reassurance, and care in these uncertain times. Our dedicated physicians, nurses, and staff stand ready to safely deliver world-class care just as we have for nearly 70 years. This is what we do. We are here for you, and we will overcome this together. To access Hogue for all of your health care needs, visit hogue.org trust. Before the next earthquake, take 30 seconds to refresh your memory about these important disaster preparedness tips. Make a family emergency plan. Decide how you'll get in touch with each other, where you'll go, and what you'll do in an emergency. Build a disaster supply kit with enough water, food, and emergency supplies to last at least three days. It's important to have disaster supply kits for work, cars, and pets too. Find and fix items in your home that might hurt someone by moving, breaking, or falling during an earthquake. Know how to react safely when the ground shakes. If you're inside, stay there. Remember to drop, cover, and hold on. 
Drop down onto your hands and knees and cover your head and neck with your arms to protect yourself from falling objects. If you can move safely, crawl under a sturdy desk or table and hold on to one of the legs until the shaking stops. After an earthquake, help people who are hurt or trapped. Call 911 for emergencies only. Check your home for damage, including gas or water leaks, damaged wiring, or downed power lines. Protect your family and your home by making a plan, building a kit, and practicing disaster drills at least twice a year. Be sure to visit ReadyOC.org for more information on emergency preparedness and AlertOC.com to sign up for emergency alerts and notifications. We want you to be prepared for a disaster just as much as you do. Welcome back. I have Carlos Rojas here, who's our Director of Security. Thank you for joining us. It's been a while. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you for the invitation. You're welcome. And you know, things are obviously different now, and so we really wanted you to come in and, and tell us, you know, what are some of the things that are going on with security here locally? Uh, there have been a couple of concerns, so we'll get to those. But overall, let's just have a good overview of what security's like in Laguna Woods Village. Sure. Well, as you know, I've been here since uh, February, and the public health crisis was something a little different that no one expected to deal with. But uh, you know, overall safety is very high in Laguna Woods Village. And one of the things that I've been observing from the time I've been here was the different uh, security procedures and protocols we have in place. And mm -hmm. of course, I'm looking at see where we can improve in areas that may be challenging. Uh, however, overall, I'm very impressed with the level of security and safety here in the village. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's. It Tim Moy was a he was a he was a great guy and he had a lot of experience, which you also have had that kind of experience. I was actually with the Santa Ana Police Department oh, okay. for 28 years, and then uh, for another couple of years up in the San Francisco Bay Area. That's right, with the BART it, system. Correct, and so uh, so I, I've seen the highs and the lows, and in the criminal activity come and go in both an urban setting and a transit setting. And so it is very refreshing to be here in the village and really see some of the safety measures that have taken place over time. And mm -hmm. you know, Mr. Moy did an excellent job here, of course. Well, that is awesome. So it's nice to have a, something already in place that you could just expand upon. So that's really Absolutely. great. Um, there was an article that came out and gosh, you know, the Sheriff's Department is trying to do a pretty good job of maintaining the, I think the rhetoric around it. But then you've got ABC7 and a variety of other news channels that are just blowing these pictures out of control. So inmates are being released early. And when, when we did interview the sheriff not too long ago, he was talking about that. And we're talking about the kind of people that they're releasing. But then you have some of these other news stations that I think are just scaring a lot of people. Can you kind of elaborate on sort of what is going on at that end? Uh, sure, there have been some releases of lower level uh, inmates. And that's something that uh, has been done due to this, due to this public health crisis. Right. Uh, we haven't seen that impact uh, in the village. Okay. And people are being released at, uh, at all times, whether there's a public health crisis or not. Of course, okay. it's got more attention um, due to what's been going on in, in the various communities. Mm -hmm. And it's always concern, uh, of concern when people are released. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it's also very dangerous to to really uh, blow up and, and make this a bigger deal than it, than it is. Okay. At this point, we haven't seen any of that concern play itself out here in the village. Well, that's good because I think people got a little concerned when they started to see some of those photographs of people and then they're thinking, oh my gosh, are they gonna be here in our community at no time, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Now, we, we've, had a couple, we've had a couple little things happen in the area, so maybe you can talk to us a little about some of those incidents. Sure. One of the things that we did have, um, we had some auto thefts, okay. and uh, that was definitely an anomaly here within the village. Mm -hmm. So it does, you know, auto thefts do happen in various communities throughout the county, but that it is pretty rare here in the village. And we had three of them in a very short period of time. And in working with the sheriff's department, what we found out was that the vehicles were either left unsecured or the windows were partially down, and more importantly, keys were left inside those vehicles. Oh boy. So in the public safety world, there's uh, a saying that says, uh, um, opportunity makes the thief. 
<laughs> and uh, unfortunately, in these situations, um, I think we did have individuals that shouldn't have been in our community, whether they were relatives of somebody living in the village or right. came in from the outside, and they were burglarizing these vehicles, trying to get something of value, and then I, I, I believe that they found the keys and they took the cars. Yeah. And on the positive side, we were able to recover a couple of those cars here in Orange County, and those were returned to the owners. You know, those key fobs, I think, are super easy to just leave because you just get out of your car and you forget it. You don't have to lock your car. And that's, I, I would imagine that's probably contributing to that. Um, absolutely, you know, the key fobs, you could leave them in the car and then many of the newer vehicles do have the push to start and folks could just drive away. So we really encourage people to take their keys with them okay. and then make sure not have to not have anything of value uh, within sight. Okay, good, that's really good to know. Um, okay, so increased village patrols, what are some things you're doing there? Yeah, so uh, we looked at these incidents because of course when anytime you have a couple auto thefts in a short period of time, it's of, of concern. So we're working closely with the Sheriff's Department and they have increased their vehicle patrols mm -hmm. within the village. Okay. And then as far as our security staff, we've also increased our vehicle patrols, but we're also doing foot patrols. Oh, okay. And one of the things that we were uh, able to realize during the, this incident, which uh, during these incidents, which happened at a, t at a time of darkness, is uh, our security officers didn't have capability, night vision capability, so they can better see at night. So we are looking into buying some equipment for our security <laughs> officers that will enable them to see at night. Because uh, in one of the instances, we did see trespassers come on site, mm. and unfortunately, we weren't able to locate them. And the night vision will, will help us in the future. So when you say night vision, I mean, of course, I'm thinking military night vision, you know, those little things that come down and look. So what are you talking about? Uh, and night vision is very common, of course, in the military and in uh, in law enforcement. Okay. And it's just really the ability for the person who's operating either what's called a monocular or a binocular, and it allows okay. it to to sense heat or ambient light, gotcha. which you could it helps you in identifying somebody that may be hiding in the shadows. Oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, Let's see, increased, you said increased, okay, so increased foot patrol and vehicle patrols, that's good, and then nighttime surveillance, so that's great. Now, one thing I think we've talked a lot about uh, when you were not here is we talked about the see something, say something, and that obviously is obvious in the situation that we're talking about now, but what other incidents should people be looking out for when it is important for them to say something? Well, I think it's very important that if, uh, if our folks see some suspicious activity in, in the community, that they, that they call. And it may not be a crime in and of itself, but if it's if it's something that they find suspicious and intuitively something doesn't sit right with them, mm -hmm. please give our security folks a, a chance to go out there, talk talk to to whoever uh, they're seeing out there, and see if they belong in our community. Okay. So I think it's very important for folks to be proactive and be aware of their surroundings. Well, and then also given the nature of this situation here with you know COVID nineteen and people who might be at home and need help, uh, if there is something that's a security related, they should call the number for security that just to give their neighbor a, hel a helping hand type of thing. Is uh, that all right too? Uh, uh, absolutely. The okay. more communication we have, uh, the better off uh, we are in terms of prevention and then you know, preventing any, any future activity here in the village. Okay, great. Now, a lot of things are starting to reopen here in our communities and we're starting to kind of transition back to what we thought it was gonna be like, but it may not be the same as what we thought it was. So transitioning our gate ambassadors and people who were advised to stay at home, how is that gonna happen and when do you think that might happen? Yeah, of course we're gonna be, uh, as an executive team, be in discussions on how we phase folks back into work. Okay. And early on we had about 30% of our gate ambassadors who are all residents who decided not to work and they really wanted to take care of their health and they were concerned about that and we of course uh, respected that and uh, we're we're looking for uh, we're looking forward to having them back and uh, they're very vital part of our organization mm -hmm. and then you know of course in the meantime we've had other VMS staff that has worked the gates and that's helped fill the gap 
Right, okay. And so uh, do we have a time frame yet or not? At this point, we don't have a time frame. And then, of course, we're closely monitoring the guidelines by the county, mm -hmm. state, and, and federal government, of course. Okay, good. Anything else? I, I think that's it. And I, and I think our residents just need to make sure that if they see something, to say something. And uh, we want to continue to have a very safe community here in the village. Thank you. It was really nice to have you on. And, Thank you. Uh, we're going we're gonna to make you have a regular spot here at some point, <laughs> but we just can't quite figure out how to make that happen yet. Okay. So soon enough, you are, you are the, only the second guest that we've had live behind Jeff Parker. So All right. thanks for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. All right. And remember, uh, if you have any issues with security or things that don't look right, make sure that you contact our security department at 580-1400. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with some card games that you can play online. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Kimber Mood with the Orange County Sheriff's Department. We have seen an increase in phone scams where con artists pretend to be someone they are not, including law enforcement officers. Don't be a victim. Trust your instincts. If a call seems suspicious, it probably is. For example, the Orange County Sheriff's Department will never require payment over the phone. If you receive one of these calls, contact the Orange County Sheriff's Department as soon as possible and visit our website to learn more about scams. It's important for you to get your financial house in order. And so it breaks my heart sometimes when I see widows that come in with $100,000, $200,000 to their name, and yet their broker has lost two or $300,000 in the market when they shouldn't even have been in the market. The most satisfying part that I find in working with retirees is when they come in on their annual reviews and the market has had a, a bad turn, and we know that we can sit down and look at them and say, you haven't lost any money. Now there's a new way to buy a new Lexus. It's called Car Dash, only available at SouthCountyLexus.com. It's amazingly simple. Visit SouthCountyLexus.com, select and reserve your new or pre-owned vehicle that comes with a five-day love it or leave it guarantee. Apply for credit, calculate your payment, and even appraise your trade-in. You can even have the vehicle delivered, all online, saving you valuable time. Push a button, get a Lexus. At South County Lexus, different is amazing. May know AgeWell for delivering life-saving Meals on Wheels to homebound seniors. But did you know they keep seniors active and engaged at 10 modern centers? Serve nutritious congregate meals amid friendly surroundings. Transport seniors safely to and from appointments. And provide much-needed equipment and other essential services. Now this vital nonprofit organization needs your support to sustain its mission. This is AgeWell Senior Services. Won't you make it yours? So before we go into our card games, did you get the brain teaser? Let me read it one more time. What five letter word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it? And the answer is short. Although if you're adding two letters to it, I, I'm not quite sure. That's like taking two letters away. Anyhow, the answer is short. So we'll have more brain teasers later in the week uh, and next week. So stay tuned for those. All right. So card games. Many of you are card game folks anyway. So we've got a few that we want to share with you that are online. Now we have talked about some of them, but I wanted just to kind of elaborate on some more that we found. So Mahjong we talked about, and you can play the American Mahjong against computers and your friends on your computer, iPad, or lap, uh, tablet. And it's nice because it's two weeks free when you sign up, but then it's like $5 a month. But if you're playing a lot, then you will enjoy it. And our own Constance loves it. So it's realmahjong.com. And then, of course, you bridge lovers, which I'm sure you guys have already figured out how to do your own bridge via Zoom and whatever other uh, resources we have available to share. But if you don't, you can go to bridgebase.com and they have free online bridge and it is the largest bridge site in the world. So they have your duplicate bridge, tournaments, money games, view graph, and a variety of other ones. So there you go, bridgebase.com. Then we have poker. 
So for you gambling types out there, pure poker from the poker experts for free. So you can experience what poker is meant to be, a fast and exciting gameplay, and that's playwpt.com. Now, the AARP organization also has a variety of card games on their website. So you can have like Solitaire, and so if you look on the right-hand side there, they have all sorts of things, like the word games are really popular. So I think you can even play, it was called um, Boggle, and that's a, that's a board game, but you can do that online. So you can go to aarp.org, I believe, and that will have all the card games and fun stuff for you to do online. All right, we are gonna take a break, and when we come back, we'll give you some other music things that are going on in the community, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm John Bowser Bauman. You probably know me best as Bowser from Sean on Ah, but I'm also president of Social Security Works PAC. And you know, when I'm in Laguna Woods, I always watch Village Television. Grease for peace. As a professional licensed realtor, you have worked countless hours to ensure your reputation is the best. Your clients know they can trust your judgment, that you'll be around when they need you, and that you will deliver what you promise. In escrow, one company has set that same standard for excellence. Escrow Options Group offers more than just outstanding escrow services. White glove concierge services, wire and fraud protection, custom estimates, and more at no extra charge. Choose the company that mirrors your professionalism. Escrow Options Group. Experience a better option of escrow services. consider hearing to be an essential part of your life. During this time of quarantine and isolation, you need to be hearing the best you can to understand how to stay safe and to hear your friends and family. Advanced Ear Care is offering service to everyone that needs help with their hearing aids, no matter where it was you purchased. If it's not working properly, please call for a free troubleshooting appointment. We even have hands-free, no-contact curbside service. There's no charge for this service. Advanced Ear Care is here to keep you hearing during these critical days. We have a movie for you today, and the movie is called At Eternity's Gate. And it is about famed but tormented artist Vincent Van Gogh, and he spends his final years in Arles, France, and he's painting masterworks of the natural world that surrounds him. So that will be uh, shown today at two with subtitles and then 6 p.m. without subtitles. So hopefully you can catch that movie and enjoy it. And that was brought to us by Radnet. So thank you, Radnet, for that. Oh, and I wanted to also give you something else now I'm gonna start giving you on the movies, is there's this rate, this is a rating system, it's called Rotten Tomatoes. So that one got 80%, so that's a pretty good, pretty good uh, rating, so hopefully you'll enjoy that movie today. All right, let's go on to some of the other fun things that we've got going on. So today, Monday, May the 4th be with you, is a classical concert. The Metropolitan Opera is doing another one at 4.30 today. You can go to metopera.org. Then there's a jazz one, that's kind of cool, Jen Shu Shu Shayu's Jazz Gallery Happy Hour Hang. That's at 3 p.m., so hey, happy hours anytime. Jazzygallery.org, so that looks like a really cool one. Then we have something else that's really interesting. It's called the Pickathon Festival, and it launches a concert a day. So every day this week at 1 p.m., it's on YouTube, and it's called Pickathon. So today it's going to be Israel Nash, so you can go on there and check that out. Then we have another one. Uh, oh, actually, that's not until the end of the month. That's May 29th through June 7th. It's called We Are One, a Global Film Festival. So as we get closer to that, we'll go ahead and, and talk to you more about that. Now, tomorrow, we do have our GRF meeting that will begin right after our broadcast at 9.30 in the morning. So we wanted to let you know to participate while that is happening. 
during the time that it's being aired. You can email your questions to meeting at vmsinc.org. You could call during that time frame, 949-268-2020. And then of course you can watch it on your digital device, your iPad or your computer, and you want to log into lagunawoodsvillage.com forward slash meetings. And of course that is at the time that we are airing the uh, meeting. So there you go. Other than that, we've got, you know, I don't want you to forget that we have the delivery three days a week from Memorial Care, and that's Monday, Tuesdays, and Fridays. So if you would like to receive something tomorrow, you would need to call the numbers that you see there, which is 949-452-3333 or 949-452-3032, and they will provide you, you can't kind of pick and choose the groceries, they're gonna provide you just some staples and things that uh, you can enjoy. So other than that, it looks like you've got uh, a lot of things that you are going to be able to participate in today to fill your day. It's gonna be a lovely day, so maybe try to go outside and get some fresh air. Let's take a look at our weather one last time to get an idea of what we're looking at in temperatures. Today will be pleasant. It's not gonna to be too hot today. We're looking at about 80s is the, is the high, and then overnight in the low, in the 60s, then tomorrow we are getting warmer at 86.62, then hot, 87, and then really hot on Friday, or Thursday, 93.60. And by the weekend, we're going to cool down a little bit on 83.61. So there you go. Have a great Monday. And of course, as I said a million times, <laughs> may the fourth be with you. And enjoy your day and stay healthy. And we'll see you again tomorrow at 9. Bye-bye.